Joel Miller serves as the central playable character in The Last of Us, while also playing supporting roles in The Last of Us Left Behind and The Last of Us Part 2, where he briefly becomes playable. Additionally, he is a featured character in the No Return mode. In the grim landscape of post-apocalyptic America, devastated by the Cordyceps brain infection, Joel emerges as a survivor. His life takes a tragic turn with the loss of his beloved daughter, Sarah, during the initial chaos of the outbreak. Subsequently, Joel adopts a hardened persona, navigating the harsh realities of this world as a smuggler with a cynical outlook. His path converges with that of Ellie Williams, a young girl whose significance lies in her potential to save humanity. Tasked with smuggling and safeguarding Ellie, Joel forms an unbreakable bond with her as they journey through the perilous landscape together. Welcome back to the leaderboard. Today, we're going to take a look at the life of Joel Miller from The Last of Us series. Before we get started, make sure that you like the video if you like it and subscribe to the leaderboard for more like this. Alright, let's get into the video. Background and Early Life Joel, a native of Arlington, Texas, was born on September 26, 1981 and spent his formative years in the state with his younger brother Tommy. In his youth, he cultivated a deep love for music, mastering the acoustic guitar and harboring dreams of a singing career. However, his trajectory shifted dramatically when he became a father to a daughter named Sarah at a young age and entered into a brief marriage with her mother. The dissolution of this marriage shortly after Sarah's birth marked a painful chapter in Joel's life, one he finds difficult to discuss. Consequently, he assumed the role of a single father, raising Sarah without the support of his partner. Their home was situated in or around Austin, Texas, within Travis County, where they resided in a two-story single-family house. As a mature individual, Joel pursued a career as a carpenter, working alongside his brother Tommy. His workplace was equipped with a securely locked safe containing a revolver, while outside his residence stood his trusty pickup truck. Within the confines of his living space, architectural blueprints adorned his bedside table, accompanied by numerous editions of the book Construction Regionalism atop his bookshelf. His entrepreneurial aspirations were evident, evidenced by the presence of literature such as everything you need to know about creating a startup, strategically placed on a nearby table. Joel's dedication to physical fitness was also apparent, evidenced by the treadmill occupying a corner of his bed. Bedroom. Amidst his demanding work schedule, Joel made a concerted effort to bond with his daughter Sarah. There were numerous photographs all throughout the house, often capturing moments of joy, like a cruise, a carnival outing with Tommy, and Sarah's soccer matches. Furthermore, the father-daughter duo frequently embarked on hiking excursions, indicative of their shared appreciation for the outdoors. Sarah often insisted on visiting every museum in Texas. On the eve of Joel's 32nd birthday, just prior to the onset of the outbreak, Sarah presented Joel with a new watch to replace the one he had inadvertently damaged months earlier. This thoughtful gesture bestowed upon him a cherished keepsake. Events of The Last of Us Losing Sarah On the evening of September 26, 2013, Joel returned home from work later than usual and spent some time with Sarah before tucking her into bed, sharing a moment watching television together. However, in the early hours of September 27th, an unforeseen and harrowing event transpired. Joel found himself under attack by his neighbor and was compelled to defend himself, resulting in the fatal shooting of the assailant using his revolver. Once the immediate danger was quelled, Joel focused on reassuring Sarah, only to be swiftly aided by Tommy, who arrived with his truck to evacuate them from the scene. As they embarked on their escape, attempting to navigate the chaotic circumstances, they encountered unexpected obstacles. Their intended route was obstructed, prompting them to seek an alternative path, albeit one fraught with peril. Tragically, their journey was further marred by a collision with another vehicle, rendering their means of transportation inoperable. Joel, exhibiting quick thinking and resourcefulness, shattered the windshield to facilitate their escape on foot, carrying Sarah due to her injuries sustained in the crash. Amidst the turmoil, Tommy valiantly sacrificed himself, holding off pursuing threats to ensure Joel and Sarah's safety. Despite these efforts, their ordeal was far from over. Their path intersected with a soldier whose orders from a superior over the radio dictated their demise. In a heart-wrenching turn of events, Joel found himself facing mortal peril, only to be saved by the timely intervention of Tommy who neutralized the soldier. Amidst the chaos, Sarah sustained fatal injuries, and despite Joel's desperate attempts to save her, she passed away in his embrace, leaving him to grapple with the devastating loss. Surviving Following the tragic loss of Sarah, Joel found himself seeking refuge in a triage clinic upon reaching the highway. He bore witness to the profound devastation inflicted upon families and the unraveling of societal order. In the depths of despair, Joel grappled with thoughts of self-annihilation, yet ultimately found himself unable to succumb to such despair, discovering a glimmer of purpose amidst the darkness. However, the cause he identified as worth fighting for was one that deeply conflicted with the beliefs of his brother, Tommy. In the ensuing years, Joel and Tommy navigated a treacherous path 
path, resorting to morally ambiguous means of survival. Descending into a realm of moral ambiguity, Joel embraced a ruthless existence characterized by torment, deceit, and the merciless elimination of numerous innocents, assuming the role of a predator. Employing cunning tactics such as feigning vulnerability to ensnare unsuspecting victims, Joel resorted to increasingly desperate measures in his relentless pursuit of sustenance and safety. After a perilous journey, Joel and Tommy finally arrived in Boston, surreptitiously infiltrating the city's confines. However, the tensions between the brothers reached a breaking point as Tommy grew increasingly disillusioned with Joel's survival ethos. Eventually, Tommy severed ties with Joel, opting to align himself with the burgeoning militia faction known as the Fireflies, swayed by the persuasive rhetoric of their leader, Marlene. Their heated exchange culminated in Tommy's departure, punctuated by a resolute declaration of estrangement. Despite his brother's departure, Joel found solace in the company of Tess Servopolis, forming a deep bond as they embarked on a partnership as smugglers within the quarantine zone. Their collaboration extended to various individuals, including the enigmatic Robert, whom they viewed with skepticism, and Bill, who owed Joel significant debts. Additionally, they crossed paths with Donovan in their ventures. While the nature of Joel and Tess's relationship remains ambiguous, their interactions suggest a profound mutual regard and reliance on each other's support. Confronting Robert During the summer of 2033, Joel and Tess found themselves betrayed by Robert, who orchestrated an assault against Tess by hiring two assailants. Determined to confront him, Joel and Tess set out to locate his hideout. Their journey was fraught with obstacles as they were compelled to navigate outside the safety of the city walls when soldiers implemented a lockdown in response to a Firefly attack. Amidst their trek to confront Robert, they discovered that Marlene, the prominent figure within the Firefly faction, was also in pursuit of him. As they ventured into the slums, they resorted to leveraging ration cards to gain entry, encountering resistance from local smugglers. Joel's confrontational nature nearly escalated a conflict, only to be diffused when the smuggler relented upon recognizing Tess. Upon finally locating Robert, Joel took decisive action, subduing him and delivering retribution by breaking his arm after a physical altercation. Under duress, Robert disclosed that he had sold their firearms to the Fireflies. In a swift act of vengeance, Tess ended Robert's life, prompting Joel to reassess their course of action. Recognizing the need to negotiate with the Fireflies to reclaim their weaponry, Joel proposed a diplomatic approach. Marlene, despite being injured, emerged as the representative of the Fireflies and entered into negotiations with Joel and Tess. A tentative agreement was reached. They would transport a package to a designated group of Fireflies stationed at the Capitol building in exchange for the return of their weapons and additional provisions. Although apprehensive, Joel and Tess reluctantly agreed to Marlene's terms, opting to accompany her to avoid detection by a passing military patrol. During their journey, the trio encountered a skirmish with a small contingent of soldiers, resulting in a lethal confrontation. Despite the loss of their captured comrades, Joel endeavored to console Marlene, smuggling Ellie. Guided by Marlene, Joel assists as she navigates through a kitchen, providing support while she stumbles due to her injury. Unexpectedly, they encounter a teenage girl wielding a switchblade, prompting Tess to intervene and prevent an altercation. To Joel's astonishment, Marlene discloses that the cargo they are transporting is none other than the girl, Ellie, a revelation that catches him off guard. Following a deliberation, Joel reluctantly consents to accompany Ellie to an apartment near the outer wall, agreeing to await Tess's return after she verifies the weapons with Marlene. During their journey, Joel attempts to glean insight into Ellie's past, inquiring about her parents and the Firefly's keen interest in her. Ellie discloses that her parents' parents perished a long time ago, but remains reticent about the specifics of Marlene's motives. Joel, unfazed by the lack of information, adopts a pragmatic stance, expressing a preference for ignorance regarding the intricacies of his tasks. Encapsulated in his remark, I don't gotta know. Upon reaching the apartment, Joel reclined on a couch, instructing Ellie to figure out what to do as he drifted into sleep. Ellie noted the broken state of his watch, prompting no response from Joel. By nightfall, Tess returned, and Joel consented to undertake the job upon learning of its lucrative compensation. Curious about their pivotal role, Joe queried Tess regarding Marlene's reliance on them, discovering that they were not her first or even second choice. During their journey to the checkpoint, they encountered a military patrol who detained them for inspection. Ellie's panic led to her assaulting one of the soldiers, prompting Joel to intervene when the soldier attempted to shoot her. In the ensuing struggle, Joel fatally incapacitated the soldier while Tess dispatched the other. Their predicament intensified when Ellie's infection was revealed during the inspection, though she denied being infected, citing a three-week-old bite mark. Before Joel and Tess could deliberate on their next course of action, they were compelled to flee as another patrol approached. Seeking refuge on the outskirts, Joel advocated for abandoning 
completing this mission, but Tess remained steadfast in her belief in Ellie. Their escape route thwarted, they navigated through perilous locales including a derelict skyscraper and a subway teeming with infected. Their journey led them to an old museum, where Joel became separated from Ellie and Tess. Maneuvering through a treacherous room filled with clickers, Joel reunited with Tess and Ellie, aiding them in combating a horde of runners. Despite their success, Joel attributed their survival to luck, a finite resource that would inevitably diminish. After facing numerous challenges, including encounters with infected individuals and the discovery of deceased soldiers within a building, the trio finally caught sight of the Capitol building. Their progress was momentarily interrupted as they traversed a building using a plank, prompting Joel to inquire if the view matched Ellie's expectations. A fleeting glance at his watch stirred memories of his daughter Sarah, though Tess swiftly redirected his focus. Upon entering the Capitol building, they were met with a grim scene. The Firefly extraction team lay lifeless, surrounded by military forces. Joel suggested retreating and abandoning the mission, asserting that such actions were not characteristic of them. However, Tess delivered a startling revelation. She too had been infected. By comparing her bite to Ellie's, Tess demonstrated Ellie's immunity, as evidenced by the differences in their wounds. Determined to ensure Ellie's safety, Tess selflessly sacrificed herself by engaging the military, buying enough time for Joel and Ellie to escape and seek out Tommy for guidance. Reluctantly, Joel and Ellie departed as Tess valiantly faced her fate. Evading soldiers and a Humvee, they sought refuge in a subway, navigating its dark, flooded passages. Witnessing Ellie's ability to withstand exposure to spores without any adverse effects further solidified Joel's belief in her immunity, affirming their resolve to continue their journey. Finding a car. Upon reaching safety outside, Ellie expressed remorse over Tess's sacrifice, but Joel sternly forbade any further discussion of her. Intent on seeking aid from Bill, a mechanic indebted to him, Joel devised a plan to journey to the nearby town where Bill resided. As they made their way towards the town the next morning, they encountered a dense forest, separating the road from their destination. Opting for a shortcut, Joel led Ellie through the woods, marveling at her unfamiliarity with such natural surroundings and her first encounter with real fireflies. Their arrival at the town revealed a perilous landscape, teeming with infected and littered with booby traps. Joel admitted to never having visited Bill in person, preferring to rendezvous at checkpoints nearer to Boston, and emphasized Bill's solitary existence. Despite navigating past Bill's defenses, Joel fell victim to one of the traps, finding himself suspended upside down, attracting the attention of infected. In a desperate struggle, Joel fended off the attackers with his revolver while Ellie worked to free him. Their ordeal was interrupted by Bill's timely intervention, who dispatched the infected with his machete, allowing them to seek refuge in a secure room. Upon securing their safety, Bill confronted Joel and Ellie, aggrieved by the destruction of his traps in their pursuit. After tensions were diffused, Bill proposed a plan to retrieve a battery from a crashed military truck, viewing its success as repayment of his debts to Joel. Bill escorted Joel and Ellie to a church, which doubled as his own personal armory. As Bill armed himself with two shotguns, he attempted to dissuade Joel from pursuing their mission, citing Tessa's disapproval and characterizing it as a suicide mission. Imparting a lecture on the importance of caring for others, Bill's admonitions irked Joel, who impatiently urged him to hasten their departure, much to Bill's annoyance. Just before they left, Bill provided Joel with a nail bomb and instructed him on its usage. Outside, Joel intervened to prevent Ellie from fixating on charred corpses, but she nonchalantly dismissed the scene, claiming to have witnessed worse. On their journey, they they encountered numerous infected, including a formidable bloater at an old high school. Despite their efforts, they discovered that the car battery they sought was missing, prompting them to seek refuge in a nearby house. Joel pressed Bill for their next course of action, leading to a heated exchange that culminated in Bill insulting Tess, eliciting Joel's fury. However, their argument was abruptly halted when Bill became fixated on a corpse hanging nearby. Upon learning that it was Bill's former partner, Frank, Joel's tone softened to one of empathy as he attempted to console him. Reminded of the urgency to press forward, by the sound of an approaching engine, Joel emphasized the necessity of focusing on the present rather than dwelling on the past. Before succumbing to his injuries, Frank had managed to procure the battery for himself, installing it in a truck discovered by Ellie. Observing Bill inspecting the vehicle, Joel grasped the necessity of jumpstarting the truck to recharge the battery using the alternator. When Ellie inquired about her role, Joel entrusted her with driving while he and Bill pushed the vehicle. Despite facing multiple challenges, including fending off infected attackers, they successfully started the truck and departed, eventually returning to Bill's armory. Leaving Ellie to maintain the engine's operation, Joel bid farewell to Bill. Reflecting on their recent ordeal, they acknowledged Ellie's capability in the face of danger, though Bill expressed skepticism about
about their prospects for survival on the road. As a parting gesture, Bill bestowed upon Joel a siphon hose. Joel awkwardly attempted to offer condolences for Frank's demise, but Bill brushed it aside, seeking confirmation that their debts were settled. With mutual understanding reached, Joel rejoined Ellie in the truck, embarking on their journey to Pittsburgh, facing hunters in Pittsburgh. Joel assumed the bulk of the driving responsibilities during their journey, allowing Ellie to rest. As morning broke, they encountered a barricaded entrance to Pittsburgh, prompting Joel's apprehension about venturing further. Despite his reservations, they proceeded into the city. Deep within Pittsburgh's confines, Joel abruptly halted the truck upon spotting a man feigning distress in the road, a tactic he recognized from his days as a hunter. Sensing the danger, Joel quickly secured his seatbelt and instructed Ellie to do the same. When the man's deception was revealed, Joel reacted swiftly, accelerating the truck and colliding with him as his cohorts attacked. The ensuing chaos culminated in a collision with a bookstore, forcing Joel to defend against their assailants before fleeing the scene with Ellie on foot. Their escape led them on a journey through the city, engaging in skirmishes with numerous hunters along the way. Witnessing the hunters utilize a Humvee to target outsiders whom they labeled tourists strengthened the bond between Joel and Ellie. As they traversed through the ruins, Ellie probed Joel with questions about life before the outbreak, prompting poignant memories of his daughter Sarah, evoked by a poster for Dawn of the Wolf. Preferring to shield Ellie from the painful truth, Joel evaded her inquiries, feigning forgetfulness. To alleviate the tension, Ellie shared a joke book she possessed, offering moments of levity amidst the grim realities of their surroundings. During their ascent of an elevator shaft, Joel and Ellie became separated when the elevator malfunctioned, causing Joel to plummet to the bottom while Ellie remained safely on a ledge. Despite Ellie's attempts to descend and assist him, Joel insisted she stay put, determined to find his own way back to her. Navigating through the basement amidst the threat of infected, Joel eventually emerged and endeavored to reunite with Ellie, only to be ambushed by a hunter who submerged him underwater, hindering his escape. As as Joel struggled to reach his handgun, the hunter restrained him, jeopardizing his survival. Fortunately, Ellie intervened at the 11th hour, dispatching the assailant and saving Joel's life. Despite the gravity of the situation, Joel chastised Ellie for disregarding his instructions, prompting a heated exchange. Defending her actions, Ellie asserted that it was a matter of self-preservation, highlighting the necessity of her intervention. While Joel remained reticent in expressing gratitude, he begrudgingly entrusted Ellie with a hunting rifle upon spotting approaching hunters in the distance. Though initially disappointed by Ellie's limited firearm experience, Joel took the opportunity to impart his knowledge, teaching her how to utilize the weapon effectively. Following their successful confrontation with the hunters, Joel concluded that Ellie had earned the right to carry a pistol, albeit strictly for emergency situations. Meeting Henry and Sam. Shortly after, as they navigated through the streets, Joel and Ellie came face to face with the Humvee, evading it despite its formidable weaponry. Seeking refuge, they opted to enter a building via its balcony to escape the dangers of the street. During their ascent, Joel found himself unexpectedly attacked from behind by what he assumed to be another hunter. Reacting instinctively, Joel subdued his assailant, only to halt him when Ellie alerted him to the presence of a teenage boy pointing a gun at him. Recognizing the misunderstanding, Joel eased the tension, initiating a dialogue with the two newcomers, Henry and Sam. Tentatively agreeing to follow them to a safer location, Joel emphasized the importance of conversation. Upon reaching their hideout, Henry offered Joel some blueberries he had found, a gesture that Joel politely declined as he sought answers regarding their delayed departure. With Ellie and Sam engaged in conversation, Henry elaborated on their predicament, explaining the heightened security at the bridge during the day and the diminished presence at night. Discovering their shared objective of seeking out the fireflies, Joel listened as Henry outlined his plan to regroup with survivors at a nearby radio station. Resolved to join forces, Joel agreed opting to rest briefly to prepare for the upcoming journey. The quartet navigated their way out of the hunter-infested area by traversing through the sewers and suburban areas. During this time, Joel gradually forged a connection with the brothers, engaging in personal conversations with Henry. However, Joel remained reticent about certain aspects of his past, particularly regarding his affinity for motorbike riding, a topic that piqued Henry's curiosity but was left unexplored. When Ellie temporarily parted ways with them, Henry confided in Joel about his reluctance to disclose the fate of their friends to Sam, a sentiment to which Joel solemnly nodded in understanding. As morning dawned, Joel found himself awake early, gazing out the window while Henry prepared breakfast. The tranquility was shattered by Ellie's piercing screams as she burst into the room, pursued by an infected Sam. Reacting swiftly, Joel reached for his gun, but Henry intervened, firing his weapon to prevent Sam's demise. Despite Joel's subsequent attempt to retrieve his gun, Henry preemptively shot Sam, succumbing to overwhelming anguish. Despite Joel's attempts to dissuade him, Henry tragically took his own life. Reuniting with Tommy After the tumultuous events in Pittsburgh, Joel 
and Ellie persisted in their journey westward, determined to locate the Fireflies. Their travels led them to Jackson County, Wyoming, where Joel hoped to enlist the aid of his younger brother, Tommy, in their quest. Upon arriving at a dam obstructed by a formidable gate, they encountered a standoff with a woman and two men brandishing firearms. Attempting to negotiate safe passage, Joel was taken aback when the door began to open from within, revealing Tommy. Their reunion was marked by an embrace, during which they exchanged brief pleasantries and remarked on the passage of time. To Joel's surprise, he learned from the woman identified as Maria that Tommy had married, casting a new light on his brother's life. Maria extended an invitation for them to join her for a meal, taking note of Ellie's presence and offering her hospitality as well. Entering the settlement, they were struck by its impressive amenities, including horses, which surprised Joel upon discovering that Ellie also possessed riding skills. They learned that the group was diligently working to restore electricity to the area. While Maria attended to a radio call regarding the newly repaired generator, Tommy and Joel accompanied her, leaving the girls to dine in the cafeteria. During their walk, Tommy presented Joel with a photograph he had found in Texas upon his return. Though Joel hesitated, he ultimately declined to keep the photo, as it evoked painful memories of his deceased daughter. Tommy understood Joel reluctance and proceeded to guide him to witness the generator's activation. As they went, a worker made a playful bet on its success, prompting banter between Tommy and Joel. Upon witnessing the generator's successful operation, they shared a moment of camaraderie before retreating to a private room for conversation. In the ensuing discussion, Joel confided in Tommy about Ellie's immunity, a revelation met with skepticism initially but ultimately believed. Joel disclosed his intention to entrust Ellie to Tommy's care, viewing the Firefly's mission as his own responsibility. Despite Joel's earnest plea, Tommy refused to accept Ellie, asserting that survival alone was not enough to justify such a decision. Incensed by Tommy's refusal, Joel confronted him physically, only to be warned against further aggression. Before tensions could escalate, their confrontation was interrupted by a bandit attack on the dam, redirecting their focus to the immediate threat. Joel sprang into action, aiding in repelling the assailants and ensuring the safety of Maria and Ellie. Relieved to find Ellie unharmed, he took a moment to assess her well-being. As the group recuperated from the onslaught, Tommy reluctantly acquiesced to escorting Ellie to the Fireflies. While he broke the news to a devastated Maria, Joel's demeanor towards Ellie turned harsh, sidestepping the underlying tension between them. However, Maria confronted Joel about his treatment of Ellie, issuing a dire warning regarding Tommy's fate. Tearfully, Joel set out to retrieve Ellie, only to learn from Tommy's radio communication that she had absconded on a horse into the woods. In pursuit, Joel and Tommy trailed her to a secluded ranch house. Discovering Ellie alone in an abandoned bedroom engrossed in reading a diary, Joel attempted to persuade her to leave, but she adamantly refused. Their confrontation escalated as Ellie brought up Joel's past, including his deceased daughter Sarah, divulged to her by Maria. Joel sternly cautioned Ellie against pushing him too far. Their heated exchange delved into the losses they had both endured, with Ellie pressing Joel emotionally. Despite Tommy's interruption due to the bandit threat, the tension lingered. After dispatching the bandits, the trio resumed their journey to Tommy's settlement. Reflecting on his bond with Ellie during the ride, Joel realized he couldn't bear to abandon her and leave her vulnerable. He sought out the location of the Firefly Lab from Tommy, identified as the University of Eastern Colorado. In a symbolic gesture, he had Ellie return her horse and join him on his own. Though Tommy urged him to reconsider and discuss their plans further in town, Joel remained steadfast. With the assurance of a potential home at Tommy's settlement upon their return, Joel and Ellie embarked toward the university. Searching for Fireflies After several weeks of travel, they finally arrived at the university. Along the journey, they decided to name the horse Callus, a choice that Joel wasn't particularly fond of. Their exploration of the university grounds yielded various discoveries, including a sniper's nest, firefly symbols, and the distinctive mirror-like science building mentioned by Tommy. Encountering infected along the way, including a formidable bloater, Joel attempted to reassure Ellie by suggesting their presence served as a form of defense. Amidst their search, Joel opened up about his past aspirations of becoming a singer and his involvement in sports, while Ellie expressed her own dreams of becoming an astronaut. As they neared the abandoned and barricaded science lab, Ellie inquired about Joel's college experience, prompting him to reluctantly disclose that he didn't attend due to becoming a parent at a young age, and hesitated to delve into details about his ex-spouse. Upon reaching the building, they discovered that the Fireflies had vacated the premises. Despite this disappointment, they stumbled upon unfamiliar sights like monkeys, a novelty for Ellie, and signs of abandoned research. Their exploration led them to attempt entry through a fortified side gate, as the main entrance was heavily fortified with barbed wire. While scouring the interior, they encountered a locked door blocking their progress. Upon entering, Joel discovered a firefly skeleton alongside a recording, while Ellie sifted through files. Playing the recording, Joel learned that the Fireflies had relocated to Salt Lake City. Armed with this vital information, they prepared to depart, but were suddenly alerted by a flash on the lower floor, narrowly escaping an incoming gunshot. 
Without hesitation, they fled the building, engaging and dispatching several hostile survivors along the way. Descending to the lower levels, Joel is caught off guard by an assailant, tackled off a ledge, and impaled on a piece of rebar, sustaining severe injuries. Fortunately, his attacker meets a fatal end in the fall. Frantically descending to Joel's side, Ellie's left uncertain of how to proceed. Despite his agony, Joel manages to retrieve his revolver and gritting his teeth orders Ellie to take cover, firing at two more bandits charging toward them. Struggling to move, Joel relies on Ellie to pull him up, enduring excruciating pain as she does so. Joel struggles to remain upright, his torso pierced and blood loss taking its toll. Despite his weakened state, he insists he can manage on his own as Ellie surveys the corridor. As they navigate through a shattered window, Joel's condition worsens, prompting Ellie to intervene and shield them behind a desk from an incoming bandit's gunfire. Though Joel attempts to retaliate, he finds himself pinned down, prompting Ellie to take matters into her own hands and flank their assailant against Joel's weary protests. Her diversion allows Joel to eliminate the threat, after which Ellie helps him to his feet. Pressing on through the building, they near the exit, but Joel's faltering steps nearly lead to a fall. Rejecting Ellie's offer of assistance once more, he insists on soldiering through, only to collapse in the main hall amidst a barrage of enemy fire. Ellie valiantly dispatches the attackers, prompting Joel to begrudgingly accept their aid and rising to his feet once again. Finally reaching the outside, Joel's strength gives out as he tumbles down the steps. Securing their horse, they flee the university, but Joel's condition deteriorates rapidly. Despite Ellie's reassurance of safety, Joel succumbs to unconsciousness, falling from the horse. Frantically, Ellie attempts to rouse him, pleading for guidance on what to do next. Recovering from wound sepsis, Ellie, grappling with the gravity of Joel's deteriorating condition, musters the strength to transport him to an abandoned mall. Employing resourcefulness, she imposes a makeshift bandage using her summer shirt and secures it with duct tape to staunch Joel's bleeding. Leaving him under the watchful guard of their faithful horse, Callus, Ellie embarks on a perilous quest for medical supplies, braving encounters with both cannibals and infected. Upon her return, she administers first aid, skillfully stitching Joel's wound before ingeniously fashioning a sled to transport him through the snow. Their journey leads them to Silver Lake, where Ellie finds refuge for Joel in an abandoned house near the tranquil waters. As time stretches on, Ellie shoulders the burden of survival, venturing out to hunt for sustenance while Joel battles his injury, his fever raging unabated. Desperate for a solution, Ellie's perseverance pays off when she obtains a crucial bottle of penicillin from two survivors named David and James. However, their newfound respite is short-lived as the encroaching threat of David's group looms large. In a desperate bid to safeguard Joel, Ellie flees on horseback, but their pursuers prove relentless, resulting in the tragic demise of Callus and Ellie's subsequent capture. Meanwhile, Joel remains hidden from the group's grasp, his fate hanging in the balance. Upon awakening the following day, Joel finds himself freed from the clutches of illness, although his strength remains depleted. Driven by an urgent need to locate Ellie, he ventures out from their makeshift sanctuary, only to cross paths with remnants of David's menacing faction. In a harrowing confrontation, Joel dispatches all but two of the assailants, resorting to extreme measures to extract information regarding Ellie's whereabouts. Satiated by vengeance for Ellie's capture, he ensures the demise of his captors. Pressing onward, Joel arrives at David's settlement, where he uncovers the horrifying truth of their cannibalistic nature. Engulfed by a fierce determination, he ruthlessly eliminates any obstacle standing between him and Ellie, leaving a trail of destruction in his wake. It's amidst the chaos of a blazing restaurant that he discovers Ellie, locked in a savage struggle with David. Hastening to her side, Joel intervenes, pulling her away from the grim scene and enveloping her in a tender embrace, a gesture laden with unspoken sentiment, marking a poignant shift in their relationship. With Ellie now secure in his arms, Joel affectionately addresses her as baby girl, echoing the endearing term he once reserved for Sarah. Together they flee the town, their bond fortified by shared adversity and newfound understanding. Reaching St. Mary's as spring blossomed, Joel and Ellie finally arrived at Salt Lake City, the culmination of their arduous journey. Sensing Ellie's palpable unease and emotional turmoil, Joel endeavored to break the oppressive silence, seeking to uplift her spirits. Despite initial hesitation and distance, Ellie's demeanor softened as she beheld a majestic herd of giraffes, a moment of fleeting tranquility amidst their tumultuous odyssey. Acknowledging the weight of Ellie's harrowing experiences, Joel tentatively broached the idea of abandoning their quest and returning to the safety of Tommy's settlement. However, Ellie resolutely declined his suggestion, her resolve unshaken by the trials they'd endured together. Determined to see their mission through to its conclusion, Ellie reaffirmed her commitment, symbolizing a steadfast resilience born from their shared journey. Navigating through the city, they encountered a swarm of infected while traversing a flooded street, hopping across vehicles and construction scaffolding. As they approached a daunting gap, Ellie's apprehension surged, fearing she wouldn't make it. In a reassuring display of trust, Joel promised to catch her if needed, 
Braving the leap unaided, Ellie successfully landed, prompting Joel's praise. Their journey took a perilous turn as they attempted to cross the last bus to reach the end of the sewers. Suddenly, the bus collapsed beneath Joel, plunging him into the water-filled interior. In a frantic effort, Ellie leaped onto the sinking bus and forced the door open, only for it to vanish beneath the surface. As Joel struggled to free himself and locate Ellie, he discovered her submerged and unconscious. Acting swiftly, he hoisted her to safety, but was met with the chilling realization that she wasn't breathing. Frantically administering CPR, Joel fought to revive her. In the midst of his efforts, their sanctuary was breached by two fireflies, who swiftly subdued Joel, casting him into unconsciousness, saving Ellie. When Joel regained consciousness, he found himself at St. Mary's, accompanied by Marlene and the remnants of the Boston Fireflies. Ellie had been revived successfully, but was swiftly taken for surgery at Marlene's command, intended to extract the infection for vaccine development. Marlene informed Joel that the procedure would inevitably result in Ellie's death, emphasizing the potential to save millions with the vaccine. Joel, opposed to sacrificing Ellie, pleaded for her life, but Marlene dismissed his objections, asserting that it wasn't his decision. Determined to save Ellie, whom he regarded as a daughter figure, Joel resorted to extreme measures, coercing information from the Firefly guard Ethan regarding the surgery's location. He navigated through the facility, confronting and eliminating the head surgeon before rescuing Ellie from the operation. In the hospital parking garage, Marlene cornered Joel with a gun, attempting him to persuade that fleeing was futile and that Ellie's fate, whether at the hands of infected or ruthless survivors, was inevitable. Joel, weighed down by the grim possibility, grew weary as Marlene closed in on Ellie. Despite her offer, Joel made a definitive choice. He prioritized Ellie's life over the prospect of saving humanity. He shot Marlene, securing Ellie in a car before returning to confront the dying Firefly. Despite her pleas for mercy, Joel, driven by fear of retaliation, coldly refused and ended her life with a gunshot to the head. He then fled with Ellie back to Jackson. To shield Ellie from the burden of survivor's guilt, Joel fabricated a lie, informing her that the Fireflies had abandoned their pursuit of a cure due to her immunity. This falsehood deeply affected Ellie, plunging her into a state of despondency. Upon their arrival at Tommy's settlement, their plans were thwarted by a breakdown of their truck, forcing them to take a detour through the woods. During this journey, Joel shared memories of hiking with Sarah, envisioning a normal life for them. When Ellie confronted Joel about the truth of his earlier statements, he reassured her with a solemn oath leaving her to grapple with her own beliefs. Events of The Last of Us Part 2 Telling Tommy the Truth During a patrol inside an empty house, Tommy initiated a conversation with Joel, who was seated, meticulously cleaning an acoustic guitar. Joel, opening up to Tommy, recounted their entire journey with Ellie. From their initial smuggling operation to the Fireflies, their extensive travels across the country, and the sobering realization that Ellie's life would be sacrificed for a potential cure. Taken aback by Joel's revelations, Tommy inquired about Ellie's knowledge of these events. Joel admitted to fabricating the truth for Ellie's protection, claiming he told her there was no cure. Satisfied with Joel's explanation, Tommy suggested they return to Jackson. Joel concurred, and together they made their way back to the settlement. Upon their return, Tommy paused Joel, expressing his understanding of Joel's decision to shield Ellie from the harsh reality. He assured Joel that he wouldn't have acted differently and pledged to keep the secret, even if it meant taking it to his grave. With a nod of acknowledgement, Joel bid Tommy farewell and proceeded to his new home, guitar in hand, marking the end of their conversation, gifting Ellie a guitar. Late into the night, Joel completed his tasks and set out to find Ellie. He discovered her in her room, engrossed in her Walkman and sketching at her desk. Despite his repeated attempts to get her attention by knocking on the door and calling her name, she remained unaware of his presence. Eventually, Joel decided to enter the room and gently tap her on the shoulder, startling her. Curious about Joel's visit, Ellie inquired as to why he was there. Joel explained that he was simply checking in on her and praised her for the help she had been with providing around Jackson. He then began to recount a joke Tommy had shared, thinking Ellie would appreciate it. However, Ellie, mindful of the late hour and her early morning, politely hinted that she needed some rest. Joel respected her request, but not before promising to show her something. Leaving briefly, Joel returned with a guitar that he had stumbled upon during his patrol. He asked Ellie if she'd be interested in hearing something, to which she agreed. Before starting, Joel playfully made her promise not to laugh. With Ellie's consent, he proceeded to perform Future Days by Pearl Jam. The poignant lyrics, particularly those about envisioning future days, days of you and me, struck a chord with Ellie, visibly softening her demeanor as she listened to Joel's heartfelt rendition. After Joel concluded the song, he extended the guitar towards Ellie as a gift. Initially hesitant, Ellie attempted to decline, citing her lack of knowledge in playing it. However, Joel reminded her of his promise to teach her, which deeply touched her. Relenting, Ellie accepted the guitar. Joel then proposed that their first lesson would take place the following night, a suggestion to which Ellie readily agreed. 
As Joel prepared to depart, Ellie requested that he finish the joke he had started earlier. With a smile, he obliged, asking, what's the downside to eating a clock? It's time consuming. Ellie responded with a smile, remarking on its silliness. Joel chuckled warmly and bid her goodnight before gently closing the door, leaving Ellie to drift off to sleep. Life in Jackson. A couple years following his integration into Jackson, Joel had established himself as a well-known and respected figure within the community. He frequently embarked on scouting and patrol missions alongside Tommy, aimed at ensuring the surrounding areas remained clear of infected threats. One location they often focused on was the Mountain View Lodge, where they could enjoy moments of tranquility while strumming their guitars amidst the serene mountain backdrop. Despite being warned that adding personal comments to the patrol logbooks was against the rules by fellow patrolman Mike, Joel and Tommy persisted in this practice, a decision that entertained other patrolmen such as Eugene Linden, Bonnie, and Greg. The brothers demonstrated their prowess during patrols, efficiently handling any infected encounters and aiding survivors when needed. Their reputation led Maria to specifically assign them to deal with reports of large infected hordes nearing the community. Joel and Tommy consistently rose to the challenge, successfully eliminating numerous infected threats. Their most notable display of skill occurred during the winter of 2034, when they single-handedly vanquished over 20 infected from a 40-member horde, predominantly composed of clickers and bloaters. As Ellie often mentioned, Joel had a penchant for trading his possessions with traveling caravans in exchange for coffee, a habit he seemed to enjoy. Additionally, he rediscovered his passion for carpentry, dedicating an entire room in his home to serve as a makeshift workshop where he meticulously crafted guitars and various items for the residents of Jackson. While settling into life in Jackson, Joel continued to look after Ellie, providing her with a personal living space and a spacious shed located in his backyard. During this period, he took on the role of her mentor, teaching her essential skills such as swimming and guitar playing. To celebrate her 16th birthday, Joel arranged a trip to a nearby museum. During the journey, he playfully pushed her into the water to help her overcome her fear of swimming, and Ellie returned the favor by doing the same to him. Once at the museum, despite Joel's reservations, Ellie climbed onto a Tyrannosaurus Rex statue and leapt from it. Inside, they marveled at the various dinosaur exhibits, with Joel imparting his knowledge about them, much of which he had gleaned from action films he watched over the years. Ellie's excitement was palpable as she discovered the space exhibit upstairs, and she eagerly donned an astronaut helmet before climbing into a model space shuttle. Joel followed suit, marveling at the array of buttons and controls. Ellie expressed her wish to venture into space, prompting Joel to pull out a tape recorder and instruct her to close her eyes and listen to it on her Walkman. It played a recording of the Apollo 11 launch watching with satisfaction as Ellie immersed herself in the experience, imagining herself soaring among the stars. When the recording ended, Ellie thanked Joel, acknowledging his thoughtful birthday gift, and he presented her with a space pendant, symbolizing her newfound status as an official astronaut. Satisfied with the joy he had brought Ellie, the duo continued their exploration. At Ellie's insistence, Joel assisted her in entering the barricaded nature exhibit. However, when he heard her distressed cry, he immediately pushed through to the other side to find her staring at a firefly insignia on the wall, accompanied by the word liars. Sensing Ellie's inner turmoil, Joel gently urged her to leave, reminding her of the need to gather firewood before darkness fell. A year later, Joel, Ellie, and Tommy embarked on a patrol mission together. Joel took care of a few runners before settling down at a ski lodge, strumming Ellie's guitar. Observing the worn strings, he mentioned it to Tommy and Ellie upon their return from a sniping hunt. Tommy suggested that they visit a nearby music store to address the issue, offering to keep watch while Joel and Ellie went ahead. However, their planned route was blocked, prompting them to navigate through a nearby hotel instead. Inside, they encountered numerous infected, including a bloater. When the bloater grabbed Ellie, Joel swiftly intervened, dispatching it with a machete to rescue her. In the hotel's restaurant, they stumbled upon the remains of two teenagers who had attempted to leave Jackson months earlier. The grim discovery prompted Ellie to question the events at the hospital, but Joel brushed off her inquiries, expressing a wish for things to be different. He then urged them to refrain from further discussion on the matter and went to fetch Tommy to assist in transporting the bodies back to Jackson for burial. However, Ellie found the moment insufficient. Following this, she fled to St. Mary's in search of the truth. Upon discovering Ellie's note detailing her intentions, Joel pursued her and caught up a day later. To his surprise, he found her outside the hospital, having already uncovered the truth that he'd concealed from her for years. Despite his reluctance, Joel confessed that the Fireflies had indeed seen potential for your cure in Ellie, but he intervened to save her life. Overwhelmed, Ellie broke down, rejecting Joel and vowing to return to Jackson without ever wanting anything to do with him again. This caused a strain in their relationship. Ellie would ignore Joel while he continued to watch out for her and attempt to engage in conversation. This pattern persisted for a number of years. In March of 2038, during the community's winter dance, Joel witnessed Seth insult Ellie and Diana for kissing on the dance floor. Incensed, he rushed over and pushed Seth away, insisting that he leave. 
However, Maria intervened swiftly to separate them. Joel then sought to check on Ellie, but she rebuffed him, insisting he stay out of her affairs. Disheartened, Joel left the party. Later that evening, as he sat on his porch strumming his guitar, Ellie confronted Joel once more. Joel mentioned casually that he had obtained some coffee from passing travelers and inquired about Ellie's relationship with Dina, offering his support if they were indeed dating. However, Ellie's response was one of anger, blaming Joel for depriving her of the opportunity to potentially save humanity by sacrificing herself. In response, Joel stood up and firmly asserted that if given the choice, he'd make the same one again. Despite her frustration, Ellie eventually conceded that she was willing to forgive Joel. Just as tears welled up in his eyes, Ellie abruptly departed, leaving Joel to contemplate their strained relationship and the possibility of rebuilding. Death. On March 2nd, 2038, Joel and Tommy were on patrol when a sudden blizzard hit Jackson. Seeking shelter from the storm, they took refuge in a nearby building complex where they stumbled upon Abby Anderson, who was under attack by infected. Together, they managed to save her from the horde. Grateful, Abby led Joel and Tommy to the hideout where her group, including her, were staying at the Baldwin Mansion. After introductions were made, an uneasy silence fell over the group, prompting Joel to express suspicion about their familiarity with the brothers. Abby confirmed his suspicions by promptly shooting Joel in the leg with a shotgun. As the group subdued Tommy, they restrained Joel against a wall. Abby confronted Joel, challenging him to guess who she was, but Joel, resigned to his fate, urged her to get on with the speech and end his life. Despite having his leg bound with a makeshift tourniquet to prevent him from bleeding out, Abby mercilessly beat Joel with a golf club. When Ellie stumbled upon the brutal assault, she attempted to intervene but was quickly overpowered and restrained by Abby's comrades. Helpless, Ellie pleaded with Joel to rise, but he could only weakly open his eyes and gaze at her immobilized. Ignoring Ellie's desperate cries, Abby ruthlessly struck Joel's skull with the club, ultimately killing him at the age of 56. Legacy Joel's lifeless body, along with the unconscious forms of Tommy and Ellie, were discovered shortly after by Dina and Jesse. His remains were laid to rest in Jackson Cemetery, with numerous members of the community offering their condolences outside his residence. Driven by grief and a thirst for revenge, both Ellie and Tommy pursued Joel's assailants. Ellie, supported by Dina and later by Jesse, embarked on a mission to seek retribution for Joel's untimely death. Along the way, she uncovered the truth behind Joel's murder. Abby and her group were former fireflies seeking revenge for Joel's past actions. Joel's demise inflicted profound emotional turmoil upon Ellie, whose complex sentiments towards her surrogate father remained unresolved. In the climactic encounter with Abby, Ellie found herself at a crossroads. Despite having the opportunity to exact revenge, she hesitated, reflecting on her final conversation with Joel. Ultimately, Ellie chose to spare Abby, recognizing the futility of perpetuating the cycle of violence. As she journeyed back home, Ellie came to terms with Joel's decision to save her life and left behind his cherished guitar at her farmhouse as a poignant symbol of acceptance and forgiveness. And that, my friends, is the life of Joel Miller. What did you think? Did we cover it all adequately? Did we miss anything important? What is your favorite Joel moment? What's your least favorite Joel moment? Make sure you let us know down in the comments and subscribe to the leaderboard for more like this. Thanks for watching and we'll see you next time.